What I have in front of me is actually a fairly small document. It's only four pages, and they started off as four independent files. That doesn't necessarily cause some problems, but there's some things I want to do. The first, third, and fourth pages are actually memos. You'll notice that the bottom of page one actually has a page number one on it. When I get to page two, there's both a chart and a table, but there's no commenting or annotations on it. It doesn't give me any titles to tell me what these are, and I think I might want to adjust that a little bit. And then there is not a page number on the bottom of page two. Both pages three and four are memos, and they both have page numbers, but they all are page number one. So basically, in my four-page document, I have three page number ones and one second page that doesn't have enough information on it. Let me go back to page two, and we'll get started with our edits. What I would like to do is I'd like to add a title to this chart, because it's not really that self-explanatory, and the page looks kind of plain the way it is. So I need to go into my Tools menu, come down to Advanced Editing, and choose the Touch Up Text tool. Now I just want you to be aware of the fact that there are three Touch Up tools. There's Touch Up Text, Touch Up Reading Order, and Touch Up Object. Even though we're kind of relating this to the chart, we don't want to really update the chart. We want to update some text. So I'll choose Touch Up Text. Now we're also not editing existing text. What I want to do is create a brand new text field right above the chart. In order to do that, I have to hold my control key. When I hold my control key and click, it creates a brand new text box. It also brings up the new text font dialog. I can change the font. I can also change the mode. I'm going to leave those the way they are and just say OK. And that's when you can see the words new text. Now I want to type in the title for my chart, and that is Extended Maternity Paternity Leave Schedule. That's all there is to creating brand new text within a document that didn't even exist before. Now let's scroll down a little bit and address the need to add a page number, because remember, this page didn't actually have a page number. Once again, because it's not there already, I hold my control key on my keyboard and click on the lower left side of the page. I'm going to keep the same settings, so I'll say OK. And I replace the default new text text with just the number 2, because this is page 2. Now I'm done creating new text. Now I'm actually going to edit existing text. By scrolling down to the bottom of page 3, you'll notice that when I move my mouse over the number 1, the mouse cursor actually changes to an I-beam. If you ever roll over existing text, you'll know so because it changes to the I-beam. Then using word processing techniques, I can click and drag to select the number 1 and simply type the number 3 to replace it. Likewise, at the bottom of page 4, I can select its page number and type in 4. When I'm all finished, if I want to see how all of this is going to look and to get out of my text editing mode, I can click on the Hand tool, click on the document, and then I can scroll back up to see all of my changes are in place. As I'm scrolling through this document, though, I also notice there's something else. There seems to be an awful lot of white space. Notice the top and bottom, left and right margins of each of these pages is fairly large. If I was actually going to have people print this out, I would probably leave it because it's sized for 8.5 by 11 paper. But if I was going to be distributing this on the web, I might want to take off that extra space because even though it looks like it's blank, it actually makes the file size larger. In order to do this, I'm going to use the cropping tool. Once again, there's a couple of ways I can do it. I can go to the Tools menu, choose Advanced Editing, and choose the Cropping Tool. But then I would actually have to draw around each of the areas I wanted to crop. Because I want to apply this to all of the pages in my document, I can kind of save a step and simply go to the Document menu and choose Crop Pages. Either way that you start, you're going to end up in this dialog box. 
Here you can choose your margin controls if you want to constrain properties if you know exact measurements. For example, I want to take a half inch off of each side. But what I actually want to do is about three quarters of the way down on the left hand side. It's a simple checkbox and it says remove the white margins. As I kind of toggle this on or off, on the right side you can see a preview with and without the cropping. So it's going to come down as close as it can to the actual content on the page, including the page number at the bottom, and crop off everything above, below, to the left and right that's considered a margin. At the bottom right side of the dialog box, you can also choose which pages to apply this to. Because I do want to apply it to all of the pages, I'm going to go ahead and choose all instead of just the current page. And then I'll click OK. And now as I scroll through the document, you can see that we have eliminated all of that extra space. It also has made our pages different sizes because we were able to eliminate more off of the page 2 than we were off of the actual memos.